Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Extending WP GraphQL. In the previous video, we learned about how to register a mutation and we learned how to add all of the input fields and add the output fields as well as create a resolver. In this video, we will continue further and we'll discuss about how to implement active wishlist and how to create that functionality. So let's begin. So if you go back to our code and see what we've done so far, so we have registered a mutation called add to wishlist. You've got input fields, output fields, and this is the function which returns the response. Now, but there is a problem here. The problem is that this mutation is supposed to be private, right? Now, let's try it out and see if this mutation is private or not, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a request through Postman. And this, as you can see that we are making a request to localhost 8020, uh, which is my WordPress site, a local site. And I'm doing a GraphQL request over here. Let me just zoom it in for you. So I'm doing the GraphQL request and I'm doing this uh, mutation. So I'm not inside the WordPress environment. So I'm not authenticated. So if I send the request, so you can see that this request is kind of going through. So you can see that I'm getting all of the response, all of the data, and there's no error basically, right? Which means this request is being successful even though I'm not logged in and that's not what we want, right? What we really want is that if the user is not authenticated, if you're not passing the JWT, then it should not go through. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. What we're gonna do now is we'll go over here and we'll say user ID equals get current user ID, okay? And if at all user ID is not present, which means not the, the uh, current user is uh, not locked in, uh, then, which means the user ID is not available, that means the user is not authenticated, I'm going to add the error in the response. So I'm going to say response, and then I'm going to say error equals, and I'm going to say authentication failed, right? All right. So, and I'm just going to return the response from here. Return response. Okay. Perfect. So now, if I try to hit that with the postman, see what happens. So send the request. Great. You can see, I'm getting a message as authentication fails. So it's not allowing me to go any further unless I'm logged in. So what do we do with that? How do we solve it? So now our mutation is secured, it's private, and I do need to pass the authentication token uh, for me to be able to proceed with this request. So I've already created a login request. So I'm going to click on this one. And as you can see that this is a mutation that says login and you've got the uh, input uh, password and the username. Of course, in the real world, it's never going to be root root, but this is just for development purposes. And it's going to return the auth token uh, once the password and ID is correct. So I'm going to hit send and, it, and you can see that it's given me the auth token right here. Right, so I'm just going to copy that and just zoom out a little bit. So this is my JWT and I'm going to go to add to wishlist again and I'm going to click on the headers and authorization and then I'm going to say bearer, bearer and I'm going to paste the token there and then finally I'm going to go back and make the request again and see what happens. There you go, congratulations. Now you can say that there is no error, which means that we are successfully authenticated. And this is an authenticated request, which is why it is past this uh, and it's returning the response with no error, which means it didn't go inside this condition uh, because it's getting the current user ID. And if you wanna know that is the case, like you actually getting the ID, you can actually return that from here and see that will work for you. So let me just do that response 
and uh, where do I add it? Just for the time being, let me just put that inside of the product ID. I, I know that it's not the product ID, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm just showing that I'm passing product ID to show you that it actually is returning the user ID from that. Okay, so let me show that to you. So send it again. And there you go, you can see that uh, the product ID is one. So it's not the product ID, actually it's the user ID. That's just for demonstration. So user ID is one, and that's what the user ID is. So if you go back and check under users, and this user ID is actually user ID is one, because there's only one user here, All right? Okay, cool. So that means our mutation is now secure. Perfect. So now in the next video, we're going to continue further and we're going to write our functionality to store the uh, product ID into the user meta, right? So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And please do, please do start my repository, Headless CMS, to support my work. And please do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran El Sayyad and my Twitter handle is Cody Tech, all right? So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much.